This is how alcohol impacts fasting. Now, I don't mean drinking alcohol during your fast. I mean drinking the occasional drink if you're practicing a fasting lifestyle, whether that be intermittent fasting or the occasional prolonged fast. Now, the simple solution to fix the issue altogether would be, well, stop drinking, but that's not always easy for everybody. I will say, point blank, that's going to be your best solution. Okay, it does impede fat loss, absolutely. But if we understand what is happening, we can time when we potentially drink, but we also understand maybe this isn't something we wanna do. So let's go ahead and dive in. One of the things I've helped people with when they do wanna drink during their eating period is just consume something like an electrolyte. It does affect the brain in a way that is very interesting. Okay, those NST neurons in the hindbrain, that can make it so that cravings are satisfied. Not only does it help you with your food cravings, it can potentially help you with alcohol cravings as well. Okay, you're talking about how the brain is functioning and how sodium kind of conducts that electricity in the brain. I put a link down below for Element, which are the electrolytes that I use. I typically drink them during my fast because I like the benefits I get of drinking electrolytes during a fast, but if you wanna have them during your eating period instead of a cocktail, it's a great transition place, it really is, and I mean that sincerely. I've helped a lot of people get off alcohol by just turning them on to electrolytes instead because they feel pretty good, they get a little energy boost. So that link down below will get you a free variety pack along with your purchase. So you go to drinklmnt.com slash Thomas and I get you that free variety pack along with whatever you purchase. So their citrus salt is my current jam, but I used to like the mango habanero the most, but now, now I'm more of a citrus salt guy. So I have that just about every day, usually two times a day, sometimes three, depending on how much I'm fasting. First thing we have to remember, if you've ever watched my channel before, I talk about things called transcription factors. Transcription factors are part of our whole gene expression whole process, right? What happens is a transcription factor binds to DNA and it tells that DNA what to sort of set the theme as for specific cells. In the case of fasting, one of the main benefits is an increase or an activation of a transcription factor, a nuclear receptor protein called PPAR alpha. It's been about a year since I've really talked about PPAR alpha, but now it's coming back. So PPAR alpha signals to the DNA to ultimately signal to the cells to increase their ability to utilize fats. So when you're fasting, you are skyrocketing the activation of this PPAR, which makes it so that you are better at oxidizing and using fats, which makes perfect sense when you're fasting because you wanna be able to tap into your stored body fat for pure survival. So it just makes sense. But there's a serious problem that we face. There was a study that was published in the journal Alcohol that found that ethanol actually decreased the ability for this transcription factor, for PPAR, to bind to DNA, specifically in the liver. So what this means is that the whole entire umbrella of fat utilization gets closed. You've got this beautiful umbrella that's increasing the ability of the cells to oxidize fats, burn them better, convert to ketones better, bring fats into the mitochondria, increases in carnitine palmitoyl transferase, increases in all this ability to use fats, and that just gets closed, attenuated, because alcohol has impeded the ability for that PPAR to bind to the DNA. Now, the interesting thing is, is that this backs up older research from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that demonstrated this too, except they demonstrated it in a different way. They found, for whatever reason, ethanol impedes fat oxidation. It suppresses fatty acid oxidation. Now, there were a number of reasons why they thought so. They thought maybe it was just, uh, you know, the liver has to prioritize alcohol so everything else takes a back seat. So what's the solution with this? Stop drinking, but what's the real solution? Okay. On days that you are fasting, your fatty acid oxidation is going to be higher. It just is, okay? So what this means is that even after you break your fast, your body is preferentially still oxidizing fats. Your glucose tolerance actually goes down on days you fast. Your ability to utilize carbohydrates effectively goes down a little bit. It doesn't go away, but it goes down a little bit. So on the days that you are fasting, it should be a clear cardinal rule to not drink alcohol. Why? Because you throw a giant blockade in the fat loss that is happening, and you throw a giant blockade in the actual metabolic changes that are occurring. It makes no sense to drink on a day that you had fasted. 
not during your fast and not after you break your fast. Not to mention, you're probably gonna be extra sensitive to that alcohol, so the negative effects, as far as the consistent arousal of your brain negatively impacting your sleep, is going to be even worse. Okay, well now we have to look at a different thing. And that's the fact that when we drink alcohol, there is a potential increase in visceral fat. In fact, there was a study published in the journal Nutrition that found a dose-dependent relationship. The more alcohol, the more visceral fat formed. Visceral fat is the fat that stores around the liver and ultimately in the peritoneum, like in the, just the cavity, the abdominal cavity. Fasting is great because it actually accelerates the burning of this stuff. But when you're standing in the way of it with alcohol, it's a moot point, right? But the reason that I mention this is that when you are processing fuel and you do not oxidize fat well, the first place it's gonna to start to store is likely around your liver and then kind of go out from there. Now, one of the reasons that this happens so much is not just the ethanol, but it's the congeners that are in specific alcohols. So any of the alcohols that have congeners are gonna be ones that uh, you know, are usually like brandies and things like rums where they have like these colorings too, like that whole congener attribute. That can add an additional layer of difficulty to the liver. I encourage you to look at your fasting as sort of a liver thing. Like the liver is really the conductor of this fasting orchestra. There's another side that we have to remember too though. Okay, and this is where it gets kind of complicated. Alcohol impedes gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the liver's ability to produce glucose. The liver produces glucose from other substrates, including components of fat. So if we impede that process or stand in the way of that process, then we not only lose workout performance because our liver cannot produce glucose, but we also run the risk of not being able to preserve muscle mass as well. We run the risk of going hypoglycemic when we start working out, and we run the risk of potentially going hypoglycemic when we fast and feeling foggy and fatigued. So not exactly something you want to be doing. So again, it comes back to, well, what should you drink and how often should you drink? If you absolutely must, it should be things like triple or quadruple distilled vodka, something that has very little congeners. Even the wines that are keto approved, I have serious qualms over them. It's still alcohol and the congeners are still in them. So I recommend the clear stuff. I mean, like seriously, go for the tequila, go for the gin, go for the vodkas like I mentioned. Heck, go all the way and go for the Everclear. Just go all the way. It's gonna at least be less congeners and less stress on the liver and make sure you're only doing it on days that you are not fasting, ideally two days away from your last fast. If you're fasting every day, then guess what? You shouldn't be drinking every day. You should never be drinking in that case. This is going to at least help it so you're not shutting down these fat oxidation genes in a lot of ways, and you're at least still able to capitalize on the benefits. But the general theme, quit, stop. See you tomorrow.